I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. Over the years, I've worked on many antique bed frames, uh, repairing, restoring, refinishing, and altering the size, typically to accommodate a larger mattress. Today, we'll look at two bed frames I've worked on. They both needed longer rails, and one needed new legs to raise the height. And I'm particularly proud of these legs I made. Usually when a bed needs to be longer, I make new rails. But you'll see in the case of the sleigh bed, I added on to the existing rails. And that worked out fine. But I really waded into the weeds when I got into the finishing end of that job. And I wish I'd stopped a lot sooner, as the bed rails didn't even show when the bed was made up. But both beds looked pretty good. Enjoy the videos. If you do, hit like, subscribe. Please feel free to share on other social media platforms. I'd appreciate it. I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is an antique sleigh bed, called sleigh bed because it resembles the front of a sleigh. It's American Empire, probably from about 1840. Uh, these beds, are the design is French in origin, but the American Empire period picked it up. Uh, that's distinguished by the uh, figured veneer and these big uh, scrolls you see here. Uh, this bed is wide enough for a queen. It's a very unusual for an antique bed, but it needs to be made longer, so that's my job. Typically when I make an antique bed longer, it almost, it's almost always necessary to make entirely new rails. But these rails are so massive and so large, and I only have to add on a few inches. I think I can add on to these rails. This bed was originally held together by bed bolts in the French style, which goes in through here. The hole there is now plugged, but the bolt would go in this way. There's a nut in there to accommodate it. The bolts have these holes on the ends to accommodate, you know, being able to turn it when it's in there. Good way to break your scratch off. Apparently the bed bolts were uh, done away with some time ago and these brackets were installed. They appear to be old brackets. So in other words, this piece goes on the end of this rail, just happens to have come off and the rails go in there and lock it in place. You can see where the tenons were plugged, and also there's a little bit of the hole. Uh, there, there's a nut in there somewhere, and they cut the tenons off and installed these. And uh, we're going to go with these. The finish on the bed is not bad. It looks like an, an old refinishing job. The whole bed is very, very blonde. Uh, I don't know if it was done on purpose. I suspect it was because it's too evenly. All right, I've got this uh, honking big piece of mahogany here, which I'm going to uh, mill up and, and edge glue to get the sizes I need to make the extensions.
So what I'm doing here is, you know, I want to make a lap joint on which to glue my extension for this rail. I'm going to use a router to cut that joint nut. This is my router jig to guide the router. I'm trying to figure out a way to clamp it to this rail. Actually, I don't think it's going to work because my piece here isn't big enough. But I'll build some, build it up on the sides and clamp it further out. I realized as I was adjusting my template that I needed to secure the rail to my bench here. Okay, I've got my joint cut on both rails. And of course I discovered when I cut these that these rails are actually made out of poplar and veneer. That kind of fooled me when I first looked at them. But they have a tremendous uh, mahogany cap on the rails. And the veneer goes up over that joint. So uh, from this side they really look solid. So anyway, my, pat my extension piece is mahogany anyway. It doesn't match this mahogany great. But I've gone through all my veneer with a thought to veneering the face of it. But I don't have anything really that matches this well enough. I might as well go with the mahogany I've got. So I'm going to cut the uh, matching joint on my extensions uh, the same way I cut these uh, with that router template. Alright, so uh, now I'm ready to fit my new piece, the extension, and uh, glue it up. So you can see there's a space here, of course, and that's because I purposely left this too long. I've got to trim this part of my new piece now so that that fits in snug up against here. Because this rail is, uh, is bowed, I'm a little bit high here, so I need to take a little bit of wood off the back of this area. i got to make sure my new piece is, is above the rail. So I took very little off with the table saw, but this bow right here, this high point, you know, because this is veneered, I can't sand this board that much. I think that I need to uh, possibly take a little bit more off my repair piece, but I also think I'm going to take some off the inside of the rail too. Uh, my joint looks really fl flat, it looks good, but uh, I think I've got to plane this down a little bit, see if I can maintain that flat joint, but I've got to get this section above that section. So that's better already, but uh, I still got to take more off till I get the center section up. All right, I think I've got it planed down uh, well enough as well as I'm going to get it. I'm going to glue it up now.
the uh, same procedure on the other rail. Luckily the second rail doesn't have those blowing problems. This one uh, fits fine just like it is. So I'll just glue this on the same way as I did the other one. So I'm just realizing that the, uh, the location of the hanger is different for the footboard and the headboard. That's maybe the first time I've ever seen a bed that had a difference in the hangers end to end. Usually they're, they're interchangeable. That went down great. It's nice and strong. But I do need to tell you, I didn't just put this bracket on and come over and hook this up. I've been back and forth to the bench about six times with this thing, making micro adjustments, and it was just too fussy to videotape. All right, now I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with finishing. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, clean this just with some commercial cleaner that I like. Uh, I've already sanded my new wood here to 100. I'm going to sand it with 150, then 220, and I'm going to lightly sand the whole piece with some 220. Okay, well now I've sanded the repair area of the bed rail all the way up to 220, and I've also sanded my cutoff to use as a sample. 
So now I've got three things I've got to think about here. I have the new wood of my extension. I have old wood that's been sanded up to 220. Uh, now the rest of this rail, I've cleaned it, and I'm going to sand it lightly with 220 gold paper, which is a, just a non-filling paper I use for sanding finishes. All right, I've got everything sanded. Now I'm going to put a little alcohol on this whole area and see how the three areas look together. So you can see here the new wood, so different. There's the sanded wood, which is darker and redder. And here's what we've got, this sort of uh, a, a bleached out, very light, uh, yellowish look to it. Well, the, the first thing I'm thinking about is uh, the new wood and the fact that it has like zero yellow in it. So I have some golden oak stain and I'm going to try it on my uh, cutoff sample here. And that's interesting. I'm going to spray some uh, aerosol shellac on just a little area here so I can see the color that I'm going for. Yeah, this stain looks like it has possibilities. I've got to let this dry and spray some shellac on my sample and then compare it to that. This is fast drying stain. It dries in one hour, but I'm just helping it along with the heat gun a little bit. I'll spray it now. I just want to get an idea of what we're looking at here. Oh, that's good. Uh, it's got my yellow in it, and it's still a tad lighter than the original finish. That's right where I want to be. Now, even though this sanded wood needs some yellow, too, I don't want to put the oil stain on it because I'm afraid it's going to make it darker also. So I'm going to tape off my new wood and seal this old wood with shellac. All right, off camera, I gave these a second coat of uh, shellac with the aerosol, and so now... I'm ready to stain the new wood. All right, I've let the stain dry for a couple hours. I'm going to just uh, do a little tape off of the old wood area, and I'm going to spray uh, at least two coats of shellac. My goal is to build up the finish to be the same level of build as the old finish. Okay, these have I actually put three coats of shellac on the new wood. And now, remove these, and I'm going to sand the uh, entire repair area here with 320 gold paper, and then spray this whole area with another coat of shellac. All right, my repair area is kind of nice and smooth and even now. So I've got to do something, try to do something anyway, about this uh, old wood that is uh, darker because it got sanded. So I'm going to tape off my new wood, and I'm going to tone it. I have an a aerosol toner here, and uh, the toner is lacquer uh, with some stain in it. So this is called natural pine, and I think it looks pretty good as well. Well, that toning definitely, you know, helps some, but I'm going to do it again. I may have to do it uh, maybe even two more times. Uh, it's better, but i got a little ways to go here. So I was really hoping that uh, overnight my color problem would go away, but it didn't, unfortunately. So I think what I'm going to have to do is, you know, these, these dark mahogany areas, they've lightened up some with my toning. I'm going to go in now with some glaze and uh, get them a little bit closer to the color and then I think I will tone this whole area and kind of sunburst it into the uh, color of the bed over here. So what I'm going to do, and I've already fooled around with it a little bit, I'm going to take a clear glaze coat and mix with it some um, ochre yellow oil stain. And that uh, produced a color not unlike the color of the bed rails. Okay, now I'll let my uh, glaze coat dry for about an hour, and then I'll go back in with the aerosols. Okay, my glaze is dried, 
you know, this is a tough problem here. Uh, we've got this bleached out mahogany. We have my new wood. We have the area where the old mahogany got sanded and is now returned to its original color. Uh, one solution would be to refinish the entire rails and blend in the new piece. But then you'd have to refinish the bed. And that's silly. The bed is beautiful. It's got a great color to it. So at this point, I'm just going to tone. I'm going to use some raw umber toner. I'm going to try to make this look as good as I can and sort of fade or sort of sunburst into the old finish. So between coats of my uh, aerosol toners on the uh, rails, I'm going to go over the headboard and footboard uh, just with a real gentle, mild solution of a commercial cleaner I like using, and then I'll polish them with the beeswax polish. All right, I sprayed a couple more coats of toner on this end of the bed and just let it fade into the light part. Um, the colors, not bad. It's actually similar to the darker parts of the bed. Now, uh, if you remember the rails, I cleaned and I sanded, and I'm just going to give them a quick uh, little French polish thing here. You know, I've got to uh, face reality here and uh, say uh, this looks pretty bad. I've got to redo it. I've got to start over again. I'm going to wash off everything that I've done with lacquer thinner and I'm going to uh, try to bleach the uh, wood that's been made darker by sanding. You know, I keep thinking about how good the new wood, the extension pieces, look with that golden oak stain on it. Uh, so I'm thinking I'm going to tape off the uh, old wood, stain and seal the new wood. Then I'm going to attempt to bleach just the dark area here. Okay, I've uh, let the stain dry. Now I'm going to seal this with a vinyl sealer, the aerosol here, and then uh, I'll sand the sealer when it dries and some gloss lacquer. I just feel like maybe that will stand up better to uh, against the bleach solution I'm going to put right next to it. Alright, I've let the uh, sealer dry for a couple of hours. And now I'm going to uh, sand with 320 and spray it with uh, gloss lacquer. All right, I've let this uh, lacquer dry overnight, and uh, we'll see if the bleach will work on just this area here. All right, this is two-part wood bleach uh, made for this purpose. I guess it's uh, sodium hydroxide, maybe hydrogen peroxide. I'm not positive about that. You mix it together 50-50. So what's next? Uh, I discovered a couple things here. You know, the bleach can work. Also, though, when I stripped the finish off the old rails, the wood became quite a bit darker. A lot of that color just might have been in the finish. So what I'm going to start by doing is uh, I'm going to sand. This is rough. I've got to sand this uh, at an angle to get to make it smooth, and I'm going to lightly start just lightly sanding the whole rail and just see kind of what it looks like. I'm sanding at a 45 degree angle. You know, the, the, the fibers of the wood, because of the water in the bleach, the fibers have raised up. And I'm trying to roll those fibers over and cut them off. I don't want to just push them back down. So after just smoothing it with a 220, now I'm sanding with 150 and uh, I like what I'm seeing so far. So I've uh, sanded these really well with 150, uh, just by hand. Uh, you know, they're not flat. I don't want them to be flat, nor did I try to sand out 
uh, a lot of the scars and defects and stuff. I'm hoping these will still look old. I'm going to put a coat of shellac on them now, to which I've added uh, some yellow dye stain. Uh, but first, I'm going to tape off my new wood. I'll coat these with shellac, and that'll give me an idea of what color I want to stain the new wood with. This is 12 ounces of shellac. Uh, thinned out probably somewhere between a one pound cut and a two pound cut. And I've added uh, six ounces of yellow dye stain. You know, the idea being is that this finish has a lot of yellow in it. It's really yellowed. And so this will get me off to a start. All right, these look good. I think the yellow really helped to keep it light. My greatest concern is, is how dark these are going to be. Uh, they're still really red, so uh, maybe tomorrow I'll put a coat on and I'll add some uh, green to it or add blue to what I've already got to make it a little greener. So I've let this dry overnight and it, uh, it looks good. I've still got to do more work on this color, but the next thing I have to do is stain my new wood to this color. I have a sample block here that I'm going to try some dye stain. I have some medium brown walnut dye stain which I've thinned out probably more than 50-50. You know that seems like a, a pretty good color. It has the right amount of orange in it. See, the nice thing about the dye stains is that my color is a little light. And so I put on a coat, then you can go back and add more and keep darkening it until you get just the, to the level that you want. I can just keep adding it and making it as dark as I need for it to be. And in fact, here I'll get fancy and try to continue some of the stripes. All right, I've let this uh, dye stain dry for a couple hours. Now I'm going to put on a, a clear coat of shellac. I think first I'm going to take my uh, markers and do touch up on some of the putty I've got here. Now this is just clear shellac I'm doing on the new wood. I want to get it caught up to the rest of the bed rail. Okay, so my sealer coat on my new wood is dried. Now I'm going to put a coat on the, on the entire bed rails. Now remember, my, this coat, I put a lot of yellow in the shellac. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that same shellac that I had the yellow in. Now it's green. That's going to help me kill the red on the bed rails. Okay, last night, uh, off camera, I put another coat of clear shellac on here and let it dry overnight. And uh, I think this looks good. I'm not going to put any more color or anything on it. I'm going to sand it and give it a final coat. Let this dry overnight. All right, this is dried overnight. They look good. I'm uh, I'm anxious to set the bed up. Well, 
this is it. This nice antique sleigh bed. It's now big enough for a queen size mattress, which is pretty amazing for an antique bed. And uh, even though the, the color on the rails was problematic, uh, I think it looks pretty good. I'm Tom Johnson of Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Guam, Maine. This is a very nice headboard and footboard. Uh, it's French. Uh, I'm not sure which style. I know it's French because it's stamped uh, with the name of the manufacturer and their address in Paris. I'm thinking possibly it's a, a early 20th century reproduction. And what's got to happen here? is the owners want the bed raised up. It, it, the original height of the rails was very low. So we're going to raise it up four and a half inches and then I'm going to make new bed rails long enough for a queen size bed. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is remove one of the legs just to see exactly what I've got there. Okay, the foot uh, came off fine. turned four identical legs here. As you can see I've already put flutes in two of them. Uh, what I did was I made this jig which is a box made out of plywood that I can fit over the leg that I've turned here. I've remounted it on the lathe. Now I will adjust my jig exactly where I want it and I'll use a small air powered router then to make the actual flute. Okay, I've got the box clamped into position now. I lock the lathe into position using the index. And then I'll make my first cut here a light cut. Okay, so now I'm going to trim off this uh, waste piece. I'll leave the bottom on for now, so uh, give me a way to stamp them up. I'm going to sand the flutes and stain these and get them ready for a finish. Uh, there's a lot of different colors in the footboard and headboard, but I'm going to concentrate mostly on the color that's on this upper column because my pieces match that. I fooled around with a piece of wood that I have from same stock that I turned the legs with. Uh, mixed together some walnut stain and some golden oak stain. Uh, it looks a lot lighter there. Uh, the leg that I stained though, because it's a turning, came out darker. Uh, I'm still glad that the leg is lighter. I'm going to use the stain and then I'll seal it with shellac. And then I have a couple of other uh, techniques with other stains I'll use to darken it. Now I'll brush on the first of two coats of shellac. So I've let the shellac dry overnight. Now I'm going to sand them with 320 and then I'm going to stain them again, either with an oil stain or a glaze, to see if I can bring it in to the flipboard. So now I've got them all sanded and I'm going to apply the glaze coat. Glaze is a heavy medium, I don't know exactly what it's made out of, with colors uh, added. In this particular case I, I buy the glaze already mixed up with uh, Van Dyke Brown in it. You can control the glaze, that's why you put it over a sealed surface. Just as a demonstration, I'll put some on my sample piece. 
you apply the glaze. You can wipe off as much or as little as you want. So I'll very carefully just pat it a little bit. I'll leave a little bit more on this side. Then I take a dry brush. I'm leaving a little bit more on this side so it'll be darker. So I'll apply the glaze liberally because I want it to get down into all the crevices and corners. And I'm just patting it off. Now I want to leave some down in these corners and crevices and whatnot, but not too much. And the part that's left over in the crevices and corners and stuff is a little darker and that gives it more depth. My foot here is a little light. Definitely don't want the foot to be lighter. Feet are always darker. Yeah, I like the way it looks. It looks good with the other uh, upper part of the column. Now, that's very much kind of laying on the surface. It needs to dry really well. Um, if you're going to brush on a finish, maybe dry overnight. I'm going to spray these with an the aerosol lacquer. And uh, so I need to let it dry for just an hour. I made a little jig here, just a square piece of wood. I drilled a half inch hole on the drill press, attached just to, to the back. I can clamp it here to line up exactly where I need to drill. This is a dowel sizer. It'll help me size the dowel I turned on the leg. changing the angle of the clamp, I'm just trying to get that to go on straight. The next step is to make new rails for the bed. Uh, this bed didn't come with any rails. It doesn't matter uh, anyway, although it would have been nice to know what they looked like. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. We need to make new rails in any case because this is we're making this bed into a clean size bed. So I'll cut these boards and build them up uh, long enough for a clean. So I've cut my rails to length and I need to drill into the ends. I'm going to put two dowels and then a hole for a bed bolt. I cut an extra piece when I was cross cutting them of the rail about two inches wide and on the drill press I drilled the holes exactly where I wanted them and attached this so I can attach it to the rails. The center hole is for the bolt. This is the bed bolt that's going to go through the headboard and footboard and I'm going to embed the nut into the rail. So the first step is to drill that center hole deep enough to go to the nut.
All right, I'm going to try the nut again. Oh, it looks good. That's got it. Now, I've got to make uh, two different moldings on the bed where the right here where the rail attaches. There's two different moldings that run along the bottom and the top of the rail, so I've got to reproduce those. Now I've drilled all the rails and installed the bed bolts. I did one section of the bed where the rails connect, and now I've got to do the other three parts of these legs where the rails connect. The center hole is for the bolt, so I've got to drill that now all the way through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp a piece of scrap wood underneath so that when the bit breaks through the other side, it's clean. Now I've got my half inch hole, which can accommodate the bolt itself, but I'm going to need to drill from this side a 7 8 hole to accommodate the head of the bolt. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug this hole with a half inch dowel so I can drill. So here's my plugged hole and now I've got to drill a 7 8 hole to accommodate the head of the bolt. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down one inch right here. I'm going to clamp a block of wood to the side. The bit gets so close to the edge here that I want to ensure that I don't get any breakout or anything. Now the bolt fits right in there and I got room for a cover. Now comes the moment of truth when I put the bed together with the new rails for the first time. Uh, I'm going to put it together and then I'm going to attach the moldings to the outside of the rail because I've got to line them up exactly with the existing moldings on the bed. Now, while the bed is assembled and the nuts I know are in place and positioned where they need to be, I cut some little pieces of wood and I'm going to glue that in there. I'll flush it off and sand it later to capture the nut in place. I've sanded up my moldings here and now I want to locate them while the rails are still attached to the bed. I think what I'll do is I'll clamp, I'll clamp the moldings in place and then I'll just draw a line and then I can take the bed apart and uh, glue and nail the moldings. Uh, so now I'm going to trim off the ends so that they're nice and flush. And then I've already sanded everything but I'm going to go over everything again with 150. I'm staining the rails now with some uh, oil stain, some brown, some gold oak, and thinner. So here's the bed set up in the customer's home. If you remember, when they bought it, it was just a headboard and a footboard. It was much lower to the ground, so I made new legs that raised the height four and a half inches, and it had no bed rails. Also, it was made for a 54-inch bed, so I made new rails, and I was able to move them far enough to the outside edge of the bed that it can now accommodate a 60-inch mattress. And we, the bed is put together with bed bolts. There it is. I think it looks pretty good.